One reason that people are so scared is that the numbers just keep going up. According to Johns Hopkins, more than 1.3 million Americans are now confirmed to have gotten sick from this virus. The death toll has now surpassed 82,000. John Hopkins, Dr. Tom Inglesby, will testify about the pandemic before a House committee a little later today. He is a director of the Center for the Health Security at the university's Bloomberg School of Public Health. And he joins us this morning. Good to see you, Dr. Inglesby. Let's get right to the numbers because we keep hearing Los Angeles County, it's going to be extended. The stay-at-home owners are told, stay-at-home orders rather, they're told not to freak out. Always good advice. Health experts warned us yesterday that the death toll is probably going to go up and be higher than we thought. And that if we open up too soon, that we do it at our own peril. What's your best advice on when and how states should start to reopen? And I realize it probably varies from state to state. Yeah, it really does vary at this point because some states have seen a, a pretty marked decrease in case numbers over the last month, and some states are really still seeing a, a rise in cases on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's like a patchwork around the country. But the four things that really that states should have in place to to lower the risk of reopening is a, two weeks of declining cases, a health system that can really care for more people if they get sick widespread diagnostic testing available for anyone who has COVID symptoms, and then a program for rapid tracing of contacts of cases so we can try and break the chain of transmission. We keep hearing about testing. Everybody says testing is the key. I think everybody agrees mm -hmm. that we're not where we need to be when it comes to testing. So I want to know from you, what do we need to see and how close are we to being what you think is, is, is smart to re-enter society, I call it? I think in some places in the country where we are getting closer, there are some states which really have brought their case numbers down to, to single digits a day, uh, new cases. That makes it possible for their public health agencies to track those cases, to find all of their contacts, get them into quarantine, and try and keep this under control. And that's what countries around the world have done that have been successful. I think the, the parts of the country that are still seeing a rapid rise in cases or daily rise or who don't really have diagnostic testing as extensive as they need to have or contact tracing, that's where it's going to be more difficult and more risky for them to reopen. And, and those places, I think, uh, we need to really proceed very cautiously. What's the balance, do you think, doctor, between hope and, and honesty for the public as we navigate this virus? And I know you're testifying later today. What is your message? But I want to hear from you the balance we need between hope and honesty. And what will your message be today? Well, I think honesty has to come first. We have people have to understand the situation and know what's going on. I think that's the obligation of government and public health and political leaders. I do think that we should have hope. We have reasonable hope. Uh, Dr. Fauci talked about vaccine development. There are medicines under development. Cases are coming down in many parts of the country. And those states have shown us that it's possible to bring this disease under control in the United States. Other countries have as well. But we also have to be realistic that it, we don't have the same situation around the country. And there are some places where this disease could really reaccelerate and cause a much larger outbreak. So I think we have to have a balance of both. But yes, there's reason for hope, but we also have to be realistic. Yeah. Your message later today will be what? My message later today will be that we really need to, to build contact tracing around the country. Uh, that's going to be our key capacity for the next six months to a year. We have to really be able to find cases through diagnostics and be able to trace their contacts. That's kind of the bread and butter public health disease control strategy that's been in place around the world. We just need to really build it up in the United States to a place where we haven't had it before. All right. And that's going to help us get this disease under control. All right. We're all looking for a, a good sign. Thank you very much, Dr. Tom Inglesby, for talking to us this morning.